gears a little bit and talk about something that I get asked about a lot. And that is if there are any tricks to doing well on multiple choice exams. So most of the medical exams in medicine or nursing or in the medical field are multiple choice tests. And there is definitely skill involved with actually taking the exam. So watch on and I will teach you 10 tips on how to ace these multiple choice exams. Okay, the first one is super obvious and that is study. Study as much as you can. If you want me to record a separate video on different studying habits and techniques and tips to help you really retain the information, then please comment below. But remember that you are studying for your career and so that you are better at your job. You're not studying to remember who is responsible for the decline of the Ottoman Empire or what the capital is of Indonesia. Everything that you learn and study will make you better in your job, whether you're a nurse or a doctor or a respiratory therapist. So study as hard as you can. That is definitely the most important tip. The second tip is pretty obvious too, and that is take as many tests and exams as you can. Taking an exam is definitely a skill, just like everything else. So the more you practice it, the better that you'll do. Honestly, to the point that now I kind of feel I've taken so many tests in my life that if you put a multiple choice exam in front of me on pretty much any subject, then I feel like I won't get a zero on it. So look up online, try to get your hands on past questions from similar quizzes. Look at really any quiz, any, any questions related to that field and answer as much as you can. The more that you do, the better that you'll do in the exam. Now let's talk about the actual exam itself. So the third tip is, is that as soon as you open the exam, immediately skim through the whole thing from beginning to end. It shouldn't take you more than about 10 minutes. This is what I do and I find that it really helps. First of all, it kind of calms down all the test jitters and just gets you in the right frame of mind for taking a test. You recognize all the words, you see the general patterns that are emerging and you just start to feel better about it. Two, you also realize exactly how long the exam is and you won't suddenly be surprised that there's a whole page at the end that you weren't expecting where you, for example, have to write an essay or all the questions at the end have huge chunks of information that you have to read through. So it just gives you a sense of the pacing that you need to take the exam. And then the third thing is, if there are any really easy questions that everybody just knows the answer for, then I will answer those questions. So even if I'm answering four or five questions in the whole exam, that automatically will give you a little bit of confidence that yes, you're not gonna get a zero. After you've scanned through the whole quiz, go back to the beginning and start answering the questions. So this is tip four, the order in which I attack every single question. So first of all, I glance through the answers. So all the multiple choice answers from A to D or E, however many you have, just to kind of give me a vague idea of what the question is looking for. Then I'll read the question at the end of the stem. So very often there's a whole chunk of information where it goes into great detail about some clinical scenario and then right at the end of all those details, there's like a one sentence question. Very often all that information is just to off put you or lead you down a different road or make you overthink the answer. So very often you can answer the question just from that one simple line at the end of the stem. So after that, try to answer the question and then just to be 100% certain that you're not missing anything, skim through the beginning just to make sure that it all adds up. If you don't know the answer to the question, then you can use tip five. And that is start eliminating the answers to the questions that you know are wrong. So A, you can eliminate the ones that are absolutely ridiculous or very obviously wrong. I'm not gonna give you examples of this. We've all seen them on tests. B, eliminate answers that say always or never. Really, there's never an always and never in medicine. So if you see those, they're probably the wrong answer. C, eliminate the outliers. So for example, if it's a numerical answer and all the options that they've given you are numbers less than 10, apart from one which is above 100, then that one's going to be wrong. So you can just eliminate that one. D, eliminate any answers that have words in them that you've never seen before. Normally they're really long complicated words, whether they're enzymes or really odd medical diagnoses or drugs, and they're only in there to trick you and make you kind of think that there's loads that you don't know. Do not answer those. If you haven't seen it in your studies, it's not gonna be the right answer. Tip six is probably the most important, and that is how to pick the right answer. So all of the following tips are all dedicated to helping you to pick the right answer. So the first one is, is that as you are reading the question, make sure that you star or you underline any negative word. So for example, not 
or none of the above or accept. There are so many mistakes made like this in tests, so be extra aware of those words. The second one is kind of the opposite of what I said earlier. So instead of avoiding answers that say never or always, if the answer has more kind of grayish words like generally or usually or tend to or sometimes, then that answer is more likely to be correct. Third, think what the test makers are trying to test you on. A few years back, I was asked to write a few questions on the pediatric boards. And the way that they ask you to write the questions is they present the information that they want the test taker to know. For example, one of them was make sure that the examinee knows that you have to start chest compressions if the heart rate falls less than 60. So just think through that as you're answering the question. They're not trying to test you on the most ridiculous esoteric piece of information that you know. They're trying to test you on the core facts. So always try to get behind the theme of the question. Four, sometimes two different answers have completely opposite information in them, where you know that one of them has to be right. For example, if you get the question, what is a normal sugar for a newborn in the first 24 hours of life? If one of the answers is less than 45 mg per deciliter and the other answer is above 45 mg per deciliter, by definition one of them has to be right. So use the other answers to give you clues. Five, if two of the answers have very similar words or phrases in them, then there's also a higher chance that one of those is going to be right, and they're just putting in those words or phrases to trick you. For example, if they ask you, what is a cause for a widened pulse pressure in a neonate? And they list a bunch of random things like high magnesium or um, a organic acidemia, and then they put a patent foramen ovale and a patent ductus arteriosus. The answer here is the patent ductus arteriosus, and there's a good chance that they put the PFO to try to trick you. Six, if there is an all the above answer or none of the above answer, or any combination of the letters, so A and B or A, B and C, then those are way more likely to be right than any of the individual letters. Remember, they're trying to test you to make sure that you know the information. And by using more of the correct answers, then they can test you on more of the information. Seven, if it's a numerical answer and you've completely forgotten the equation, then take the answer and try to work backwards, dividing, adding, to get the numbers that are given in the question. Very often, I can figure out what's going on just by the, using the combination of those different numbers. Eight, if you can't think of the right answer at all, then just start jotting down any information that you might know that pertains to the question. So for example, if the question is on necrotizing etrocolitis, then you can write gut, intestines, premature, surgery, infection, all these other things, and there's a very good chance that something will trigger your memory and help you to answer the question. Nine, if two of the answers seem right, then pick the answer that is more right. So, or the one that you have to make less allowances for, for it to be the correct answer. For example, if they ask you that for which of the following diseases is ECMO life-saving, and they give you meconium aspiration syndrome, and they give you congenital diaphragmatic hernia, the survival rates in meconium aspiration syndrome are way, way higher than in CDH. So in that situation, I would still pick MAS. So which one is more right? 10, make sure that you are answering the actual question. So sometimes they might put a very accurate statement in the answer. It doesn't mean that it's the answer to the question itself. So make sure that the answer that you're answering is what they want you to answer. Okay, so hopefully you got the correct answer. If not, then we move on to tip seven. If you really don't know the answer, then just move on. Very often, some of the other questions and answers can trigger your thought process and allow you to answer that. Make sure that when you miss the answer, that it's clearly marked so that you can go back to it. it generally, in medical exams, there are no points deducted for getting an answer wrong. So every single question on the exam should always be answered. Okay, tip eight. This is a huge one in medicine. Do not overthink the question. Remember, they're just trying to test you to make sure that you're capable of taking care of somebody clinically. They're not trying to prove that you read that one case study that might prove the question right or wrong. So always go with the simplest, most logical answer. Sometimes I just pretend, what if I didn't know anything about medicine? What would the answer be? Always go with that one. Okay, tip nine goes a little bit against conventional wisdom. People are always like, if you don't know, then always put B or always put C. 
I very much disagree with this because you really should always be able to eliminate enough questions and have enough of a gut feeling about one answer that you really don't have to guess. So do not necessarily always put a letter down, put a little bit more effort into it and try to bring it down to at least two possible answers. And tip 10 is probably the most important and that is do not panic. Remember, most tests in the medical field are on a curve. So if you find a question difficult, most people are finding that question difficult. And there isn't necessarily a strict passing grade. Sometimes it's gonna be 70% of the questions you have to get right. Sometimes it's gonna be 85% of the questions you get right, depending on how difficult or easy the exam is. So just remember, if you get most of the easy questions right, and a lot of the medium questions right, it doesn't really matter if you miss a bunch of the harder questions, you're still going to pass. If you do feel your adrenaline shoot up during the exam, then just stop, take a deep breath, close your eyes, and start thinking about a bunch of facts that you do know about the field. This should just calm you down. Very often people get into a very excited state where they then convince themselves that they don't know anything and then they start answering ridiculous answers just because they're so scared and so convinced that they don't know anything. You do know a lot, you studied for this, so just stay calm and do your best. Most of the time it's going to be more than good enough. And this is the last thing I'll say. If you do fail, then that sucks. But remember, this is very different from failing any other exam. If you do fail, then it's a fantastic opportunity for you to learn the material even better, which will make you an even better clinician. And if one little fail test is gonna stop you from doing this as a career, then honestly, it's just not cut out for you. We are all continuously studying all the time, so just get back to those books and good luck. So please remember to subscribe and like and comment. I will talk all day long about exams if you want me to. Thank you.